What's going on guys? It's Alex here with Northern Scavenger and I've decided that I want a rod holder on my canoe and for a, for a long time now I've just held this rod in between my legs in the canoe and it's worked fine but it can be a little bit annoying at times and sometimes I wonder what my life would be like if I had a rod holder, you know? So take you guys through the steps here today of uh, attaching a rod holder to the thwart of a canoe. All right, so got, just to give you guys a quick overview of what the tools are that I need, I'm going to be drilling a few holes so that these bolts will be able to fit through the thwart. And I've got this little hacksaw thing here. It might not be what it's actually called. This little saw that I can use to saw off whatever uh, bits I don't use here. Um, you don't need to do that. I just like, I find that Basically, I'm gonna be attaching it to this thwart here, and if the bolts stick too far under, they're gonna catch on bags and stuff. So I basically wanna snug those right up to pretty much be as tight as they can to the wood. So some of you guys who have been with the channel for a little while might recall that this canoe was actually uh, restored, and I redid the gunnels on it. I'll, I'll throw a little link uh, either in the description or in the video here. If you guys want to see how we did that, this thwart right here is actually one of the original thwarts that was on the canoe. It was still in pretty good shape, so I kept it, and it also happened to have this rope on it, which I've kept on here ever since. And the nostalgic side of me kind of wants to keep that rope on there. I've never used it, but I just kind of like it, so I may find a way to salvage it, but I think I'm going to have to move it around a little bit. So some of you may have seen in some of our previous videos, the way that I used to always rock my fishing rod was to take it, put it between my legs and actually rest the butt end of the rod on the seat. And then I'd put this end with like the, the lowest ring here on the outside so that nothing like that was on the inside, it could catch the edge wall on the outside. Now it's free to go and my shin was basically just in the way. And that's like, if a fish were to strike, that's what would cause the tension. Okay and then like whatever your rod, like I could still paddle on both sides. It was a little uncomfortable on this side, but if a fish took, I was right there to grab it. So definitely maybe in terms of like being able to quickly grab your rod a little bit easier. But uh, my new idea is with this rod holder system to secure it here and then essentially the rod will sit here nice and out of my way and I don't need to hold it which is pretty cool and then this can be adjusted on a whole bunch of different angles and whatnot so I think that's what I'm gonna go with I thought about putting this rail along the side here but then like you're not smooth along the gunnels anymore because this is actually like recessed a little bit below the gunnels this rail actually won't come above here so when I actually remove the rod holder from the rail the rails still like kind of hidden underneath which is good for transporting and I think just in general, when I'm not using the rod holder, it won't really get in my way. So that's the theory behind this anyways. Uh, I think I've thought through this quite a bit and I'm at the point now where it's just a rod holder and I wanna connect it to the canoe, you know? So I'll just show you guys this real quick. So this, the, the bolts that actually came with this weren't long enough, so I had to get new bolts. And I actually, I don't know if, you can, if you'll be able to see this or not, but I actually shaved down the sides either side of this bolt on this side and on this side so and actually shaved down the top you can see it's really flat it used to be kind of rounded and the reason for that is because inside the actual track I didn't want the screw sitting up so when you spin it properly it sinks right down and in and if I do the same with this back one you'll see that they are completely flush and they're not going to be causing me any issues with the track that actually needs to, to slide back and forth on it. So luckily I had a friend who had a grinder and was able to get that done for me.
So I'm gonna put a flat washer on first, and I've got this locking washer, and then just a little bolt for the bottom. So as you will see, the rail is now installed. It's like super durable, but I have these things I'm gonna like to call the bag rippers. So I'd like to cut that off right underneath there to basically just reduce any chance that uh, I'm gonna have a bag snag on that and rip it. So when you're working with stuff like this, you definitely wanna make sure you've got some uh, eye protection on. As you can see, it's definitely better. Still some sharp edges on there that I'm gonna take a file to, just so that uh, they're definitely not sharp. And then I may cover the ends of those up with something or try to cut them a little bit more flush, but that's pretty much it. And now she is secured. All right, so now the actual final step is to secure this little system. I believe this is their lock and load system. So that just slides through the, the track so it can't jump out. Nice thing is, because I flattened those screws, nothing's catching. So you basically just bring that essentially to wherever you want. Tighten this down. Like that, so that's nice and secure now. And then this just goes on top and snaps into place. Boom. That's putting a decent amount of force on it right now and that would be a pretty big fish. I gotta make this shorter because the tree's getting in the way over here, but. That's it. If you want to, you can like lock it, I guess, so that this rod's not coming out at all and guaranteed not to lose it, but I think most times I'd probably want to leave that open. Although I'd probably get pretty fast. Like if I'm going and all of a sudden I see a fish, slide that. It's still pretty quick. So another really nice thing about this is that if I am on a portage and I'm worried about this catching on stuff, it just unclips and then this could go in my bag. And this is on there pretty good. That might not catch anything. If I was worried about that too, I mean, literally could just do like two spins and pop it off and just leave this with it. This could be thrown in my day pack and then I could just carry it across with me. And then it just takes two seconds when you get to the other side of the portage to then uh, set her all back up again. Screw that back in, boom, pop that on, and you're back in back in business again. So I think the system is gonna work really well. I'm looking forward to using it. This is definitely exciting. Stoked to get out there and try this out.